All right, everybody. So thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, it's Enrique from Canada Living. We are uh, blessed with uh, an amazing young man. He's been, uh, since I've met him, it was a random meeting, you know, just complimented him on his dress and his style, fashion. He's a fashionista. And so, and that's how the conversation started. So here we are. So I'm gonna let him introduce himself because this is how it works. Uh, we're going to walk through the questions and whatnot, but it's a very casual interview kind of thing. Just wanna learn, you know, from your background and how we go. So um, tell me about you, what's your name? Tell us, you know, where you come from and we'll go from there. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me, Enrique. Uh... You know, and thank you so much. You're too kind, uh, those words. Uh, you know, we, yeah, we go way back, right? A couple of years back, uh, met you randomly there, <laughs> Papa Rudy on Robson. Uh, yeah, so a bit of a background story there or uh, some sort of background about myself. My name is Hazem Sultan. I uh, work with Remax Express Realty, uh, obviously uh, here in Vancouver. Uh, uh, in terms of what we do, uh, we obviously help clients buy and sell properties in Vancouver. Uh, and in terms of sort of personal background, uh, uh, I was uh, I was born in Saudi Arabia, but I've lived like throughout like different continents. So I lived in New Zealand for a bit. I lived in UAE uh, for a bit. I lived in Egypt for a bit, uh, London as well. So sort of been around the block, so to speak. Uh, so, yeah. And then we moved here uh, uh, when I was 15 years old uh, back in 2013. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, that's quite the, uh, the travel experience, eh? So what made you guys settle in Canada? What brought you to Canada? Well, that's a good question, Enrique. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's a land of opportunities. I mean, North, North, uh, North America. I mean, obviously everyone's, uh, most people's dreams is to actually come here, whether they hail from like the Middle East or even uh, South America and whatnot. It's always sort of a, it's one of the best options out there for anyone that wants to, uh, you know, uh, you know, find a place where there's opportunity and where there's equal chances uh, for them and then for kids as well. So that's something that uh, attracted my dad. And, you know, my father is sort of obviously he's the person that got us uh, here and he's the visionary. So uh, uh, he's always had Canada on his mind. All right. And so now I understand that you're a professional um, and this has been your goal since you arrived or did you how so when you guys came to Vancouver or sorry to Canada uh did you land straight into Vancouver and how that go yeah we've always been in Vancouver I've always been in Vancouver I came here when I was 15 years old uh I was enrolled at uh at Burnaby Central uh high school wow. so secondary yeah so I came here in grade uh 10 and then uh <laughs> you know was a Burnaby boy so to speak for first five years and then moved to Vancouver uh, obviously, uh, as I've uh, as I've mentioned to you before, we we used to own a restaurant as well on Robson Street. Okay. Obviously, everyone knows Robson; it's sort of world renowned. Uh, we had uh, sort of a a, a table service uh, sort of eatery, and uh, you know that experience uh, was uh, was really eye opening. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know uh, building a building a business here in Vancouver, there's a set of challenges, things that that. Uh, that an immigrant or even, uh, you know, uh, you know, someone that who's, you know, who's lived here their entire life, there's a few sort of obstacles that sometimes uh, people overlook or sort of in the side, uh, side sort of view mirror. So uh, I'm happy to chat about that as well. I'm, I'm sure some of your audience uh, is thinking about maybe starting a business here in Vancouver. Uh, that's sort of uh, one of their goals. Well, you know, that's actually one of the reasons why I actually started this channel because two things. Number one, I want to highlight what we as immigrants have accomplished, are accomplishing, or what we can accomplish. And also another one is for their immigrant brothers and sisters to know where to go to and that they can trust that person, you know? So for example, in this case, you know, you're in the real estate industry. Um, you're, I think that your industry is more than just, I know maybe some people think you just find homes, but it's not like that. You're, you're actually, it's one of the biggest decisions. I mean, you, not only somebody is uplifting everything from where they're from, looking for a new home. So, which by definition, you know, a home is, you know, it's it's one of the biggest decisions. It's like the the, the human right, so to speak, right? It is a human right to have your own home, it is. a safe place and all that. So in a sense, you're more than just finding a 
somewhere to live for you, for your clients. So I want to learn about more about that. You know, how can how did you decide to get into? Because I know you mentioned you were, you guys were in the restaurant industry or as in a restaurant. Uh, and so what got you into that from that transition from because uh, it's completely different, right? Right. It is. It is completely different. And, you know, sort of switching gears from the hospitality industry to real estate, uh, you know, uh, it's a fair question. And, you know, with the with that business venture that we had, the restaurant, uh, my dad wanted always wanted to open sort of a Middle Eastern restaurant, sort of, you know, convey, you know, you know, because there wasn't really good representation as far as, you know, mm. the food of our sort of uh, background, especially like the Gulf area where we uh, where we come from. So I'm, I'm originally from Saudi Arabia. So right. if you know Dubai, we're just right next door. Right. So. Uh, so, yeah, we had a really good run for two years. But as far as transitioning into real estate, uh, you know, the family has always been involved in real estate. We've always bought and sold real estate. And we know the importance of real estate. Like you mentioned, you know, when someone relocates and um, especially if they're coming from, you know, Mexico or, or Costa Rica or, or even the Middle East as well. Like I, I work with a lot of uh, clients that are relocating uh, from different provinces or even from different countries as well. Um, it's important to have that person that, that you could uh, trust, obviously, but it's such an integral part of making that transition official. Like once you actually come to Canada, that's one thing. But once you own a property, you're the owner, you're the landlord. So it's it's just, uh, it has, it, it comes with an attachment of maybe like pride of ownership. This is probably the best way I, I could explain it. So uh, obviously it's a big decision. So as far as me personally transitioning into real estate, it's it, it made, you know, it just made sense. After we closed the restaurant, uh, which we did luckily right before COVID, uh, three to four months before COVID, it's perfect timing. Perfect timing. Uh, I know it couldn't have been <laughs> honestly planned better, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought about it. I was like, okay, we've, uh, you know, we own a couple of properties of, you know, especially with negotiations to circle back to the immigration point. Uh, my dad's uh, sort of knowledge of English is a little bit limited. So I was always in contact with the realtor. Mm. So I was sort of, sort of in the trenches when it comes to negotiations and writing offers and and conveying that information to my dad was the client and I'm the client. So it's, it, it's sort of, it's similar. It's very similar. So I was like, you know what? Uh, I know, I know the business to a certain degree and I feel comfortable diving into it. And uh, it's been a great ride so far. Awesome. Yes. I know. I keep seeing your post uh, sold uh, and uh, have, um, and I follow you because again, we met, uh, you were just writing your exam, I believe, or you, were, you know, you were, uh studying for that so i've been following your your sort of your career so to speak and i can see where it's gone and you know what i'm really proud of your success because i think that um it's again is a testament of what we can accomplish you know I'll, I'll tell you a personal story you know i i used to believe so it's interesting because immigrants or two people can see the same thing differently so i i used to see it as a i'm an immigrant i'll never achieve anything because i was not born here blah 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 Mm -hmm. And then I met somebody else that had accomplished some amazing things. And then my excuses died. <laughs> it's like, right. hundred okay. percent. You know what I mean? So it's interesting because you come up as uh, with that mentality to a country like this, because this isn't, it is intimidating, you know, different cultures, uh, different language, different uh, customs, different procedures. Everything is obviously a hundred percent different. The weather is different, you know? Right. Um, so it can be very intimidating and if you don't, uh, but again, back to, you know, the purpose of this conversation is to show people that no, it can be done. Whatever it is that you want, you're coming to Canada, the doors are there. You just got to go go and uh, knock on them and perhaps, you know, and even contact us, you know, contact has them and, you know, and, and tell them, you know what, I'm moving or, you know, I would love to get into real estate. Would that be something that you guys can, that you would be able to, sorry, be willing to do, Hassan? Absolutely. A hundred percent. You know what? I've been there. I've done that. So it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a natural step. It's your transitioning. You need that sort of help. And it, it's a good thing to actually be expecting that because mm -hmm. once, once you expect that cultural shock, whether it's language, weather, all these things, it's actually, it becomes less of a, an impact, impactful sort of, uh, uh, thing that, that you're going to experience. So you're going to know from the get-go, hey, I'm going to run into this. That's okay. But just to circle back to the immigration uh, or the immigrant uh, mentality or the or the advantage versus the disadvantage, I strongly believe that you being an immigrant is a huge advantage here in Vancouver. 
Mm. It's an absolutely huge advantage because it's a huge market here in Vancouver. There's lots of opportunities, but people that were born here for the most part, their, their lens is not as sharp as someone that comes into Canada for the first time, like uh, that was born there. You're, you're always, your mind is always going to be con- uh, contrasting and they're going to be, comp- it's going to be comparing how things are done here in Canada and Vancouver specifically too, to how it's done in your, in your hometown. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're going to think, okay, well, why are they doing it a certain way? Like we're talking about business here. We're not just talking about real estate. Well, you feel that there's maybe a gap in this market. Mm-hmm. You've identified it. Why? Because you have that background, that advantage, the immigrant advantage. And you also have that advantage to, uh, or that sort of uh, motivation to prove yourself. Right. right? Uh, it's, uh, you know, I always compare myself to, like, I, I think of myself when I was in Saudi Arabia, for instance, even though we've lived in different parts, I lived in Saudi for a few years, you know, being a native and then, you know, in your home country, mm-hmm. it's a little different. You don't have that edge. You don't feel that mm-hmm. motivation. You have to be right. like the urgency. There's no urgency. I mean, you're right. there with your family and your friends yeah. and everything is good. And like your cousins and this and that. Right. Exactly. But, uh, but, the, but the nice thing about Vancouver to be specific, it's, it's a huge market. We're not talking about maybe Saskatchewan or other parts of Canada. We're talking about Vancouver, greater Vancouver. There's always demand. There's always going to be demand. And uh, it's just a matter of, just using that advantage that you have, that extra lens uh, mm-hmm. to your advantage. Okay, so now I'm I'm want to move to Vancouver. How does that look like when it comes to acquiring a home? Because I've heard that if you're not Canadian, if you're not, you can't immediately buy a house or there's so many different things. So obviously I know it's not going to be easy, but there's a way. What is the way? Right, that's a great question. There's always ways. So when it comes to residential properties, uh, before there was no, uh, so, okay, let's, let me take a sort of a step back here. So before, be prior to 2016, uh, foreign nationals would, would be able to come here and then buy a, buy a property, no problem. We're talking about residential now. Um, there, there, there was, you know, you just pay fair market value and then you transfer the title and you become the owner. Uh, in 2016, when we had the Liberal Party here in, in the province of BC, they passed down a 15% uh, tax. That's a foreign buyer tax. Okay. And then when the NDP came into power uh, later, uh, they increased that uh, percentage to 20%. So you're still able to do it, but obviously there's going to be a cost of doing business, which is 20%. Are you willing to pay the 20%? Or are you willing to maybe, you know, wait until you get your PR, you know, if you're working on it, if you're working with Canada living and with Enrique and you feel like, hey, maybe you're getting it soon within a few months or a year or whatever the case may be, it might be worthwhile to just wait, right? So you don't have to pay the 20%. So is that something that, you know, you would suggest somebody to plan it in advance? Because obviously when it's not like you decide today and it's done today, right? So is that something that you would say, you know, when you come to Canada, when you, when you arrive, have a plan in place? Would you suggest mm-hmm. that, you know, right. a, a, a goal, a goal? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? I totally agree with having a goal. You need to work towards something. Uh, as far as if you're relocating from, let's say, Mexico or Costa Rica or other other countries in, in South America, uh, you know, I've worked with clients, like I told you before, with, you know, they're relocating. Some of them have been to BC and they've been to Vancouver. So they don't know exactly what neighborhood, what type of city they're looking for. Are they looking for like something that's closer to like downtown versus they know the different type and feeling of where they want to be and where they want to live. Cause it's, you know, with residential, with your own home, it's a lifestyle decision. Right. right. Uh, but if you've never been to BC, it might be a good choice to maybe rent for a bit, you know, rent for six months for a year. Mm-hmm learn, learn the sort of lay, lay of the land, you know, see where things are and then see where you want to go as far as uh, purchasing a property, where exactly you want to be. Uh, but uh, I would say the first hurdle is just the PR if you don't want to, if you're not comfortable with the 20%. Okay. So yeah. what happens with the 20%? Do you get it back as a tax tax? Like, is there any, any way to, you know, take advantage of that 20%? Okay, quick disclaimer, I'm not a tax lawyer, I'm not a CPA, but what I can tell you from personal experience is uh, I've, I've heard from other CPAs is that, uh, and I want you to verify, is that perhaps if you are, uh, you know, if you're buying a property now and you're getting your PR within maybe six months, you might be able to get reimbursed the, the full amount. That's if there's, you know, huge urgency, you need to make that purchase now. 
But my advice always is to wait till you get your PR. And a, a really useful tip is not wait till you get your PR card, but actually change your SIN number too, mm -hmm. right? Because okay. sometimes I've, I've been in a situation like this where the lawyer would say, hey, uh, for conveyance of the property, once everything is done and it's just completion date, now they're changing the title of the property and then the buyer already has their PR card, so they're not paying a 20%, but the SIN number starts with, with, with nine. And you know what that means, Enrique. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For those that don't know, it's uh, it's uh, it's the newcomer slash immigrant sort of SIN number. Till you get your PR. Once you get your PR, the SIN number is going to be permanent. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so no, if you want to work that, for uh, a city permit. Yes, I remember that. Actually, I used to deal with it a lot. And as soon as you see a number nine, it's a filter. You know, <laughs> it's an identifier. You know, of oh, course, yeah. don't, it's not every, if not very well known, but, you know, when you're in the sales industry or in this type of industry, you do have to know these things so you can avoid any misunderstandings. Because, I mean, it can be, I mean, imagine you're expected to pay a certain amount and then all of a sudden you add 20% to this. I mean, that's quite, quite. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, uh, <laughs> and you get and you get to pay it's a lump sum payment. So, uh, but yeah, we were able to mitigate that. We just pushed the completion day to day or two. It's okay. quick. You just go to Service Canada and update the SIN number. So, yeah. Okay. But so luckily, yeah, we... So, obviously, you do have a team that works around you. So, if I go, hey, uh, this is what I need. Can you help me with that? And then you have a, a set of people that you work with? Or how does that work? No, no, that's a good question. So, I have a team of uh, two other assistants with me as well. Uh, so, in terms of what we do, uh, we focus only on sales. So, residential and commercial sales. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't, we don't, uh, sort of physically show your properties if you're looking for a lease, but we can guide you. We have resources. So if, if you're, uh, you know, if you have any questions about maybe different neighborhoods or areas in greater Vancouver, shoot us a quick email at clientcare at hasmsultan.com. And I'll leave the email there with you as well. I've got a, I've got a set of resources, things that, uh, you want to sort of uh, take a look at and, uh, you know, just to get a sense of, you know, what type of neighborhoods you want and what type of schools and whatnot, right? Of course, I completely understand. So what is the diversity of your client base? Do you work with only certain specific, only certain geographical area? Or do you, how do you, you know, what is, what is your, you know, what is your area? Or yeah, again, back to, you know, do you work with everybody? Do you, how does that work? Tell me. Yeah, that's a good question. So we don't work with everyone and not everyone wants to work with us. It's a, it's a fit right? It's always a fit. In terms of geographically, uh, we started out working in Fraser Valley, Greater Vancouver. I'm based in Vancouver, and my office now is in Pearl Harbor, uh, but uh, that was at the beginning. But now we've just uh, sort of re-strategized, and we're just focusing on Greater Vancouver. So that is Vancouver, Burnaby, Richmond, North Vancouver, and West Vancouver. So this is sort of our marketplace. Uh, we're experts in, in that marketplace, and, uh, you know, uh, we'd rather that if, if a client wants to maybe go to a different market, we'd rather just hand them off to someone that who is, uh, you know, they, that's going to take care of them and, and knows the market inside out. All right. Well, I think that we've spoken enough about business, you know, sort of, sort yeah. of, sort of speak. Um, I would like to know what on a different. So Vancouver is known for various things. Amongst that is food, the diversity of food. You know, oh, yeah. that's actually my favorite thing. I, I, <laughs> I can step out onto Robson Street and I have whatever I want. You know, Chinese, Vietnamese, uh, Japanese, Korean, Persian, you name it is there. I even tried uh, Afghan food. Oh yeah. Afghan, food. Afghan food's good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, the, the, you know what? The food scene is awesome here, especially on Robson. Like it's <sighs> it's amazing. It's amazing that the diversity of foods and, and restaurants and the options that you have, it's its mind boggling. So as a middle, would it, would it be safe to say as a Middle Eastern person that you are? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so as a Middle Eastern person that you are, I mean, your food is very rich in spices and, you know, in flavors and whatnot. What other foods have you found non-Middle East that- okay, that's a great that question. You okay. actually enjoyed and that you would recommend? You know what? Yeah, you know what? I, I love- uh, that's a good question. Honestly, uh, there's a lot of <laughs> cuisines that are really good, and there's lots of great dishes. Like one thing that comes to mind is sushi. Sushi is huge here in BC. Yeah. And uh, you know, sushi. I would say probably sushi. Italian. I love Italian too, but I would probably go with sushi. You know, it's sushi, nothing yeah. beats. Uh, yeah, nothing beats like maybe two special rolls on a <laughs> on a Wednesday night. You know. <laughs> is there a specific location that you would suggest? Because obviously, I do know. Some are, you know, they're all great, they're all good, but there's some better than others. So, would you suggest that you have personal experience? 
Is there a location that you would suggest anywhere in the city, anywhere in Vancouver, that you would say, okay. you know what, this place, every time I go, it's on point? Okay. Uh, I would say there's a few names. Miko is a great one. Miko. Miko. Where's that? Miko is great. It's in the, just by a convention center, Go Harbor. Okay. Miko, yeah, I've been, I've been there a few times. It's really nice. And uh, the food is, and you could tell the quality is a little bit better than your sort of average sushi place. Uh, but, but, uh, but as far as other places like sushi, yeah, I would say honestly Miko and then maybe mobile sushi on Robson too. That's a staple. I mean, it's been, it's been around for forever. <laughs> Momo sushi. Yeah. Yeah. There's again, you know, the selection is so great. And because we're, we are actually known for sushi actually, and I've been around uh, the world and I have tasted their sushi and it's not the same. Like, no, I don't even bother anymore. Oh, really? Hey. Yeah. I don't even bother. Like, no, no, no. It's okay. Um, I, I heard that even in Japan, they don't eat proper sushi. They eat something else. Like sashimi <laughs> really? or uh, uh, yeah, that's what I heard. It was like, they, they rarely eat it. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to come to Vancouver to eat sushi. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that's funny. Um, all right. So just to wrap it up, what advice do you have for a potential new immigrant or somebody that has just arrived? What is your, you know, what do you want to leave us with? Have a game plan. Have a game plan in mind, right? Uh, assemble the right team. Uh, you know, you have a great team here at Canada Living. Uh, you've got all the services that you would need. Uh, obviously, Enrique is, uh, you know, he's been able to put a great team together, a great company as well. Uh, and the nice thing is he's been here uh, for a long time. So he knows he knows the country. It's not one of those people that are, you know, they're, they're you know, they live in Mexico or, or they don't live in Vancouver. No, he mm-hmm. has that experience and he has that that sort of uh, trust and he has those people and the professionals that he works with. So try to lean on him for the beginning to, to, to assemble and mm-hmm. come to a plan uh, and uh, have a vision in mind, uh, have something to work towards, whether it's home ownership, whether it's starting your own business. Uh, obviously have that game plan and um, and we're available as well. Like I said, even if you're looking for a rental, we're more than happy to just, you know, give you some resources, guide you in the right way. And then once once time comes, uh, we're always available too. All right. Well, you know, Hazem, I think that again, you know, this is what I love about this Canada living and actually the name is so fitting, you know, um, yeah. it just dawned on me that one day, you know, just it just hit me. You know what? This is Canada living is a, a um, collection of all of our stories, you know, all of us from, did you know that there's over 200 nationalities in Canada? 200? Yeah. No way. <laughs> I didn't know this. <laughs> wow, I thought, it was, that, I thought that number would be around like 50 or 60 maybe, which is still a lot, but yeah. Wow, so, I learned something new. So, you know, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have to leave with that every time, actually. You know, some, <laughs> some little tidbit that people didn't know. But, uh, but you know, one of the, my favorite things is this, you know, connecting with us, you know, bridging, bridging the divide that, you know, just because you're from my ex country and I'm from this country, I'm from the opposite. It doesn't mean that we cannot come together. We cannot share our experiences because at the end of the day, um, that is what makes us stronger, you know, our differences. And so this is one of my favorite parts, you know, that doing these interviews and we just started and I can see, you know, where we can go with this because again, it's about Canada living. And again, Canada living is all about all of our stories and what all of us make it. So Hassan, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No, it's been an absolute, you. absolute pleasure, Enrique. Thank you so much for having me here. And you know what? Um, I will continue uh, checking on your uh, your success. I think that that I can only cheer you on, and I um, and if anything I can do, obviously I will do it. You know, because again, your success does not hinder me; instead, it inspires me, and that's what I want for our viewers to get. So, thank you so much. As I'm, I will be in touch, and again, all the best and all the success. All right. Thank you so much, Enrique. Absolutely, take care. Bye.